Good morning. It's time to take your seats now if you'd like to join this parallel session. This is the session on inclusive internet governance. So if that's the session you'd like to be in, please stay here. Uh, if you're still chatting away over coffee, this is your time to move while I introduce myself. I'm Emily Taylor. I'm the CEO of Guard UK, an online brand protection service. And I'm also a member of the Global Commission on Internet Governance Research Advisory Network. This session is about uh, inclusive internet governance. And uh, in particular, we're going to focus on the recent Net Mundial conference in uh, Brazil. So the, the Net Mundial took place in April at the initiative of President Dilma of Brazil and also ICANN. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, the Internet Corporation of Assigned Names and Numbers. So we're going to look at what was the process, what were the outcomes, and will the, will the whole thing have lasting impact? Now, we have a great panel here to, today, but also the panel, you'll notice, is de deliberately kept quite small in number, and that is, represents a decision on the part of the organizers to give plenty of time for audience interaction. So please be ready with your questions, be ready with your tweets. We have our wonderful digital curators, Joachim and Marcin there, who are ready to sift through your tweets. Um, and let me introduce our panel to you. Uh, on my immediate left is Grace Githaiga, an associate from the Kenya ICT Action Network, or KICTANET. I have Joanna Varon Fares, a researcher for the Center for Technology and Society in Brazil who was involved in the organization for uh, Net Mundial, if that's correct, from the civil society, or deeply involved. Informally. <laughs> Informally. Yeah. We have uh, Ambassador Dirk Brengelman, the Commissioner for International Cyber Policy from the German Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Welcome. And we have Pedro Ivo Ferraz da Silva, who is the Secretary at the Brazilian Ministry of External Relations. Uh, and you were also very involved in, in the Net Mundial process. So can I just actually have a show of hands from the audience? How many of you were at the Net Mundial? One, two, oh, a few. Online, Online yes, <laughs> in, including remote participation. So a handful, mm. okay. and. How many of you are sort of aware of its outcomes or what it was? A few more. Mm -hmm. uh, how many of you would say that it exceeded your expectations <laughs> as a process or as an outcome? A few hands. Yeah, handful. Mm -hmm. Sort of rather a muted reaction, I think. In terms of the, the process, what do we think? The process, we heard a lot of excitement from ICANN. Two of you, three, thank you. And the outcomes. So I, I don't want to, to dwell too much on the background to Net Mundial because I think other sessions have covered this in, in quite some depth. Um, but I think that what seems to have come through in the previous sessions was um, quite an excitement about the process. And all four of our panel were there. Could you just give me you know, a few remarks about you know, perhaps your expectations going into it and what you felt the process, you know, did, it, did it represent a, a, a move forward? Was it exciting? Was it just chaotic? Um, can I start with you, Pedro? Yes, um, well, I think uh, initially um, the, well, Net Mondial was a great challenge. I mean, it's, uh, we were, uh, the, we received the mandate from our president to arrange a meeting in four, five months time. 
and a meeting that should have a global outreach that should include as many uh, participants as possible and uh, that should also produce a meaningful and a concrete outcome and uh, that should incorporate in the same, let's say, working groups uh, uh, different uh, people from different uh, backgrounds that have different working methods and have different uh, decision-making processes. So this was really uh, a great. Um, had you any? Had you done anything like that before? No. That in such a short time. Well, I have worked in uh, other, let's say, multi-stakeholder uh, groups arrangements, but this this event was really unique because we really need, need we had the mandate to produce something uh, and a and document a statement that should be let's say agreed by all the the, the uh, participants involved so that was really uh, a major a major challenge and uh, i think I, I must confess that i was like a bit unsure if we would be able to make it but mm. at the end i think it was and just remind us, how many people turned up in the end, including remote participants? Well, I don't have the exact figures here. I mean, uh, in, in the meeting, it was over a thousand people that wow. appeared. So and, and from how many countries, roughly? It was 116 countries in total that were present. Well, the congratulations. So really ah. Joanna, um, from your perspective, coming from civil society, was this uh, a new thing uh, in Brazil to, to really involve multi-stakeholders in this way? Um, internationally, yes, but uh, yes and no. Because we have to remember that in Brazil we had this uh, process for building the Marco Civil. They also used uh, some tools uh, online tools to, to, for people to provide comments. So the use of technology for policy making mm. in Brazil, it's, it's been a trend lately, yeah. starting with Marco Civil. Yes. Did any, did any from the audience, sorry to interrupt sure. you, Joanna, but Joanna was just mentioning the, the tools that were created to allow for uh, many people to, um, to edit and make comments on the draft document beforehand. Did any of you actually participate in that? It, any thoughts? Can we perhaps get a microphone going and, and for, for any of the people? Pop, pop your hands up. I'd just like to get some very quick responses from you about how you found that as a process. There's a gentleman there um, who's about four tables back. Um, behind you. Keep your hand up in the air. Well, I think that the opportunity itself is uh, liberating. Uh, and I think <laughs> yesterday somebody mentioned the fact that even within there were people who were queuing up from different uh, uh, stakeholder groups. So you would have a person from civil society queue up and right behind uh, a government representative mm. queue up. So this uh, had the same effect. You had people who would put their ideas irrelevant where they came. So it was the idea that was important and the, the good ideas would bubble up. Mm. And there was also a feeling, I think, that the good ideas did bubble up. They found their place and they found the, uh, the space to be discussed there. And <laughs> actually, I would, I would uh, take this opportunity to to say that we're trying to use the same example for the multi-stakeholder advisory group on the Internet Governance Forum right now, actually to take that mm. participatory approach in uh, building the IGF in Istanbul from now. Uh, and I think it is a great example yeah. and a great door that was opened uh, so, with so, Net so that's a concrete example of how the process has been quite innovative and influenced others. Um, um, he wants to talk. You'd like to talk, sir? Yes, please. No, go, go for it. Yes, please. Um, so I pinned the one from Hong Kong. I love the process, innovation, and being able to contribute, but it didn't go quite far enough in my view. Why? Okay. Because you couldn't actually edit and remix. Okay, there's a version control issue, I understand, but having the input, it was not clear sort of, you know, what happens thereafter. Yeah. Thank you. Do, do any of you want to respond to that? Joanna? Yeah, I agree. I think... It, it was a remarkable and innovative process, but in the end, 
both uh, while redrafting and how to to make sure that the redrafting addresses all the comments and addresses all the interactions in the floor. It, it was a challenge and I, I personally, I don't think that the final draft uh, does that as it could. So it's a challenge yeah. to rethink on using all those processes and the technologies afterwards, we go back to old politics and human um, interactions with different interests and so on. Yeah. So how, how do we ensure that uh, all the process is really taken into account for drafting the final outcome is important. And I also, I think that the way it was approved just by acclamation was also an issue because if people vote, you can know who voted for yes and then you say, oh, you voted for yes, so how are you going to implement this or not? for yeah. governments at least, or for companies, and so on and so forth. That's an interesting point about, about um, the, the adoption of the document. Let, can I come back to that in a minute? But I, I just wanted to, to ask you, Grace Githaiga, coming from Kenya, and you'd, I wonder with all of the remote participation abilities and the documents being edited online, was it necessary to attend in person, do you think? <coughs> Attending in person has advantages in the sense that um, when you're participating, you get to meet people, you get to network with them, you get to lobby people uh, face to face. And when they know you, of course, um, they tend to support your position. So there's, there's, um, there's a great sense in, in, in physical participation. But let me just say about the process of Net Mundial. First, when I was going uh, to Sao Paulo, uh, I sort of did not, wasn't very clear of what the outcome would be. Mm. I was very appreciative of the process that, uh, you know, there was a call for, if you're interested in participating, for you to express that interest. So unlike any other meetings where, for example, you, you are not very sure that you will participate, this one you had to think whether you really want to participate. Uh, secondly, there was a call for content, um, to input on content of what we, we expected. And we were given enough time to do that. And there was like over 188 content. Yeah. Um, so, you, sorry, uh, you were or you were not given enough time? We were given, I, I, I think in the interest of, uh, considering that uh, Net Mundial was um, the, the, the program had already been put out there. Um, this was a structure that people needed to adhere to. And let's face it, human beings will never have enough time to do never. unless yeah. you give them a framework and a, de governance and a deadline. Beings. So in that sense, yes, I think it was very useful. Yeah. Uh, I have, you know, the, 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 there were challenges because you know, over 188 and then they were grouped into different themes and people continue to input. And harmonizing all that input, I know provided challenges mm. uh, to the, to yes, the organizers and good. to the people who are synthesizing uh, the documents. But we must appreciate, they did, I think, the best in the circumstances. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Net Mundial in my personal position, I think was a good thing. Because for the first time, we saw stakeholders sitting together and negotiating. Um, some outcome. The document may not have been, the final document may not have been perfect, but at least people sat down and talked to each other, which we haven't been able to see in other governments. I must <coughs> say, um, I was very pleased to see um, one, one member of the Iranian government who is almost in all these uh, internet yes. governance uh, uh, processes, very knowledgeable, but also very uh, strict on what needs to be done, but he was there talking to a few of us and, you know, you could talk to him. So for me, that was very good and it did demonstrate that if we have the will to embrace multi-stakeholderism, it is doable. We, we, we have a starting point and it can be doable if we have the will. Thank you, Grace. Can I turn to you, Dirk Brengelman? From your background in, as a, you know, a career diplomat and coming more recently from NATO. What did you make of this 
Did you just find it a chaotic process? Was it scary? Uh, what was the reaction? I mean, people here in this environment think it's brilliant that everyone was just sitting down with each other, or all as equals. It must have been quite a challenge for some governments, not necessarily for you. Um, there was a moment where exactly that issue played a role, and I'll come to that in one sec. Before, I just wanted to say, you said many panels covered the political background, but I think it's important to, to make clear this was kind of two tracks who came together. You had the post-Snowden situation, the speech of the president uh, in uh, New York, uh, our efforts in the uh, United Nations General Assembly, and then this political momentum from this track, and you had the debate on internet governance, ICANN, IANA, etc. So these two tracks kind of came together, and uh, the president took the bold initiative to call for that conference in very short time frame, mm -hmm. and so we were racing against the clock. And it was right from the beginning clear, the Brazilian president said it when she invited for that conference, it would be in the multi-stakeholder framework. And uh, that's how the preparations were done, that's how the conference went, and that's how the document in the end went. And that's unique. It was the first international conference which was in that framework from A to Z. So each and every stakeholder group had moments of a hiccup. And uh, coming back to your question, I was sitting next to a gentleman representing a rather large country at uh, various stages of that conference, and he made it quite clear to me Mr. Brengelman, how can it be that uh, my country and me as a representative of this country have the same weight here as uh, the company who just spoke or an NGO, uh, uh, which I don't know. It, it, so he was a little bit fascinated by that situation. And, and that's said, actually a fair point, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and, and I <laughs> made the point to him that, and now I come to what you asked me, and I said, you know, until very recently I was used to sitting in conference rooms where representatives of governments would come together and then hash it out. So yes, I know where you're coming from, but now be open to that. Uh, this is the new process and it does actually represent the reality in the internet. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is a new quality because in the internet you cannot work in secluded fashion. You need the involvement of all these groups. Mm. And I think the important point, which is sometimes <coughs> forgotten, it's not that each and every multi-stakeholder is doing the very same thing all the time. There are still special responsibilities. So governments have to, and, and parliaments have to do uh, the framework conditions. For example, it's governments who will work in the group of governmental experts in the UN framework, consult with others, yes, but will be government representatives. So. It's not a mesh-mesh, uh, but this conference in this sense was unique. But it was not just government representatives who had a hiccup. Uh, I remember someone in civic society at the very end were uh, not too happy with some of the language and, and were close to a walkout, yeah. some yeah. of them. So for each and every one it was at stages difficult, but in all in all I believe it was a very interesting experiment and I believe a successful experiment, so I would pay uh, tribute to uh, the uh, Brazilian government for doing this yeah. and to ICON. Thank you. Can I just come back quickly to you, Pedro, and then I want yes. to come to you, Joachim, as a, uh, so just line you up to, mm. to, to get some reports from the Twitter feed. Does the Net Mundial process mark a fracturing in the, in the BRIC uh, countries, the Brazil, uh, Russia, India, China, sort of, which have been, I mean, as a, as a long-term participant in the internet governance discussions, I remember the build-up, say, for the internet governance forum in Rio back in 2007, and how uh, I felt as a participant that the, the government of Brazil was very suspicious of multi-stakeholder uh, processes and very keen to get the entire uh, thing into the United Nations. It, is this, a, is this a, a division within the BRIC or is it, is it a sort of new dawn for Brazil in terms of acceptance of multi-stakeholder governance? Well, I thought that this, <laughs> Sorry about this, that. This, I had this, to ask. This, this question would be coming. I <laughs> feared that. <laughs> 
Well, I think there are two things here. Uh, first, the BRICS. I think uh, the BRICS block has, an, has never been an homogeneous block. This is from the start, and every country that's part of this block has ever always admitted that that you know it's a space where we can exchange ideas, exchange positions, but it's not uh, supposed to be a place where we will reach consensus, we'll reach like a, a coordinates. So, I don't. I, I really can't say that this was a, a fraction or... You're really still talking. Yeah, exactly. It's a space we'll hold the BRICS summits now in Fortaleza in July, just after the World Cup. And, uh, well, I think we hope that we can uh, continue our healthy dialogue concerning also internet governance. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of, of course, uh, opinions diverge here quite a lot, and uh, but I think uh, we need to continue to continue to talk and to discuss and engage in this discussion. Um, so now concerning the position of Brazil, I think sometimes there are some misunderstandings concerning uh, uh, the Brazilian position concerning internet governance. I think. We have really, in this aspect that you have just uh, mentioned, we have really, we haven't changed our position. We have always supported multi-stakeholderism. Uh, since 1995, we have a body that takes care of internet governance, which is multi-stakeholder. It started off with uh, nine members only. In 2003, it turned to a 21-member body, where government have actually minority in this in yeah. this in this and, body so and, and that is a, you know the the uh, is it the cgi the cgi the, the is a very well known and very respected exactly. example of domestic multi stakeholder governance i'm talking more on the international front mm -hmm. where the, brazil has been quite outspoken in the past about where the home of internet governance i e the, the 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 names and numbering and the the role that is currently occupied by the us where that should be yeah, I mean, but also our foreign policy kind of uh, needs to reflect what we kind of solutions and mm. things we adopt at home. And I think we have always pursued this track as well. But one thing that uh, also needs perhaps some clarification is that, um, and this is present in the, in the speech that our president held at the opening ceremony at NAN Mundial, is that we don't see multi-stakeholderism and multilateralism as two different and uh, opposed things. Actually, we, thinks they are, they are, we think that the Brazilian government thinks that it is rather a complementary, uh, two complementary concepts. Uh, we, what we don't support, and really uh, we uh, are really radically don't support, is unilateralism. And we don't support like multi-stakeholder arrangements that is there are under the supervision of one single country of one small group of, group of countries. I think we really don't support that. So, um, and we think that uh, also governments play a specific role in internet governance. We have had this discussion within the working group of enhanced cooperation, and uh, also again quoting our president. Uh, in, in the speech, um, there are some issues concerning sovereignty, like cybersecurity, cybercrime, economic transactions, transnational economic transactions that are of, let's say, where governments have a specific role to play, and really we, uh, we need to consider this part as really as essential as well. Internet Thank governance. you. So, so Brazil has always supported multi-stakeholderism. Yeah, exactly. You don't view it as excluding multilateralism, that yeah. these are not a binary choice, yeah. uh, and that there are some roles where it, that, the, that the real objection is on unilateralism. Exactly. Right. Joachim, can I come to you as the digital curator? Is anything happening on Twitter? Yes, there are some things happening on Twitter, luckily. The internet is still alive. <laughs> and Without breaking your line of questioning and without uh, destroying the discussion about the outcome of the process, there are some questions about the process by itself from the people who weren't there. So how did it actually play out? How was the work done? What was done online? What was done offline? And how did that all come together? Um, what tools were used and so forth? And that's, that's one of the directions the questions is going in. And the other one is, why is it closed now? So why, isn't, why is there no way to continue to work on the state? 
statement and, and continue the experiment, uh, since it is a digital world. All right. Thank you. Does anybody want to have a, a crack at those questions? So the, the questions were, um, uh, you know, do, can you give us a bit more examples, um, a bit more detail on the, on, on the digital tools themselves and yeah, the, what work was done online, what was done offline, but also a simple one, why can't the document still be edited? Mm. Joanna? Yeah. Um, so, for a start, there was... Um, committees were formed, most stakeholder committees. Uh, that was a tough uh, task, because representativity is an issue for other stakeholder groups that are not or governments. This was the first stage. And then the platform was set for people to express interest, so they can, could say uh, if they w were willing to attend or not. And it was open for contributions in the two main areas of, of the meeting, which were to set uh, universal principles for internet governance mm -hmm. and a roadmap for the future uh, of uh, evolution of the yeah. internet governance landscape. Um, based on those contributions, the committee, the executive committee made a, a draft, uh, a structure on, on principles and the roadmap. And then this draft was meant to go to, to the high-level committee, but then it leaked to, through WikiLeaks, mm -hmm. which was very interesting because the, the process was very open. Mm -hmm. And there was just this little part of the process within the committees uh, talking yeah. among themselves. But so even that, that part <laughs> was <laughs> transparent <laughs> by force, you know. Ah. So it was good. And was that good for the process or was it bad for the process? I think it was good for the process. The yes, it openness. Happened. Openness is one openness. of the pillars of the, yes. <laughs> of the event. So. Okay. And then then the text went to a platform and people could comment paragraph by paragraph. Mm -hmm. This is a tool that was similar to Marco Civil consultation. So, and then you can comment on, your, on a paragraph and the other person could go and comment on your comment. Mm -hmm. So now in the platform you can see the points where there was major controversy. You can see where, where the fight uh, I was following the comments on, on yes. the latest night and then a lot of people from the copyright industry started to put uh, comments on protection. Delete. Oh, yeah. And then, then I was like calling people, yeah, we should attack back the comments from the copyright trolls <laughs> and so on and, and it's all registered there. And it's, it's good because even before the meeting you could know what would be the most controversial points. Thank and you. yeah, and I think one thing that was important yeah. uh, with all this is that everybody felt they were working, besides the Brazilians that are <laughs> working like sleepless, mm -hmm. yeah. but everybody were working for that meeting even before okay. it, it started. And the way the, the, the program developed in, in local as well, it's yeah. very interactive and, and Thank you. different. D Dirk Brengelman, can I just ask, are you surprised by the second question? Why can't we continue to edit the document after it's been approved? I was a bit surprised, <laughs> yes. Uh, it was uh, adopted by, by the participants at that conference and then the conference was over. But the process as such is not really over because when you look into the document, at the very end of the document, we will find a few issues which this meeting could not agree upon. Mm. So already there you have a few elements for future debate. And uh, then, uh, you know, when you look at the various events running uh, in parallel, we'll have again the season in the United Nations, we will have the IGF, we will have the ITU Plenipot uh, at the end of the year. So the process as such is not coming to an end, it's still going on. But for the document as such, it needed to find a conclusion at the end of the conference. Yes, thank you. Are there any questions from the audience? Uh, can we get a microphone down here to the front? Any more? So I can just get the other. So we've got one down here at the front and one at this table. I think I've got two 
microphone people, haven't I? Is there a second microphone person? So if, the, it's, it's the, if you just hold your hand up, sir, then the microphone lady can find you. You go ahead, please. Oh, thank you. Pinda Wong, Hong Kong. I participated for two days online remotely. And I have two questions. The first dealing with the uh, remote participation. Will the uh, online chat in the Adobe Connect be at some point released as part of the record? That's my first question. My second question is who owns the copyright on the final document? Or is it in the public domain? Thank you. Anyone? Well, I think this is something Everyone's that we need to, you, probably to, to refer to the, to the, to the CGI, to the uh, Brazilian yeah. steering, um, steering Committee, Internet Steering Committee, who have actually uh, worked more closely in the logistics and the organization of the meeting. And uh, I think we, I can quickly find that out and see if definitely it's, uh, as I said, I think openness and transparency is, uh, let's say, one of the yeah. main values of the, this event. And uh, I think if people are requesting to have the chats uh, available, definitely this is Thank something you. that will make available. Would you like to go ahead with your question? If yes. you just introduce mm -hmm. yourself first. Thank you. My name is uh, Anders Hector. I'm working with the Swedish Ministry of Enterprise. I particip participated at Net Mundial and I was one of the many that struggled to keep up with preparations for it. One of the things that I really appreciated was the discussions in the civil society uh, on the OneNet uh, threads. Uh, although it was totally overwhelming to try and keep up with it. It was uh, a very useful debate, but uh, it would have been much more useful you know, if it was possible to keep track of it. But it was just totally overflowing the mailbox. Do you, uh, am I, I guess I'm not the only one experiencing this problem. I think even in civil society people are struggling to uh, find the time to keep tabs of this debate. Uh, are there any thoughts on how this could be developed or, you know, establish landmarks in the debate or something like that? Do you have any thoughts on this? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You've, I think you've highlighted a very important and perennial problem in this small internet governance circle of activists, whether whatever background is they're all exhausted and suffering from permanent jet lag. And there is a capacity <laughs> problem. There's something that, that, that you talked about, about the fragility of, of, of some of these multi-stakeholder models is that they, they are very reliant on individuals who are very overloaded. So perhaps, Grace, can I come to you for some reflections on that question? Um, no, he's very right about... Um uh, all these debates that are going online. Actually, sometimes it's it's almost impossible to keep uh, on top of what's happening. You you know you are on um, IGC list, you are on Best Bit list, you are on uh, One Net list, you are on NCUC list, and civil society can contribute. There are always people talking, so there are very many debates, and I don't think we have been able to agree on how some of these ideas are going to be synthesized. However, you talk about multi-stakeholderism, and I think we are coalescing um, around uh, what, what we believe uh, is defined as multi-stakeholderism. And, and for us, it, it, it has to be participatory and it has to be inclusive. Uh, we, we are also saying that you cannot separate uh, internet rights and human rights. And we are also saying that in multi-stakeholderism, you must um, recognize there are different roles and responsibilities for the different stakeholders. And there's also a multiplicity, multi or whatever, of, um, of, uh, of, of issues that different people need to participate. So in all this, we are saying no one stakeholder can define uh, what another stakeholder needs to do. So this must be agreed by all stakeholders on what their roles are and what their responsibilities are, depending on that issue. Um, and therefore, you know, these debates must continue so that we, you know, we create points of agreement as we build an internet society. Thank you. Um, I'm going to come to you, Joanna, next. But I, I've got. Can I, we line up to? microphones in the audience can you if you just oh grab that one um and oh good this is very efficient <laughs> joanna quick comment and then we'll go to the audience okay. um, i totally agree on the overload of lists and i see it as a 
a barrier for other actors to, to engage. As I think Henri had mentioned in the previous panel, it, mm. it was inclusive, it was transparent, but it was still our little internet governance bubble mm. participating on issues that uh, can yeah. have impact in all the users. So I think just as we are trying and making experiences with using technology for public consultation, for brainstormings on the ideas, I think also we as at least as civil society need to rethink uh, the ways of we communicate and compile knowledge and and make it visual because it is as the the panel on the first day said it is an infinite uh, there is an infinity of meetings and an infinity of uh, threads in mailing lists and and, and it's it blocks inclusivity thank you yes and, and and of course this is the title of our panel <laughs> inclusive internet governance and if everybody has to be included all the time when are these poor people going to sleep and eat? So. Yeah, and uh, I see some of them uh, will be in London in a few weeks' yeah. time. <laughs> so again, uh, the question sometimes is, how much time do you need to digest what has happened before? But uh, at the Net Mundial, it was more than the kind of intimate I, uh, internet governance uh, group. It was really a big conference on many issues, and the principles <laughs> For, for example, are not just about the technical issues related to internet governance, they are very general internet principles. And so the debate uh, which we had there <coughs> was, was a very wide spun debate and the main issues in the end were the issues of privacy and, and the unsolved one, net neutrality, and they were not really the internet governance issues. No, thank you. You've, you've um, moved us very nicely into the substantive parts of, of the Net Mundial and maybe I've got some people lined up but uh, can I ask you also to, to comment on the substantive uh, parts that where you felt Net Mundial succeeded, you know, particularly given that it was motivated by concerns of surveillance that we've all been talking about. Do you feel it really tackled that? Thank you, Emily. Uh, I'm, I'm Carolina Guerre. Um, and f I, I will answer th this question in, in two seconds, but yes, I, I want my, my question has been part, partially answered by uh, Joanna Grace and uh, uh, just now because yesterday was, there was this huge debate and issue uh, in the first panel uh, about uh, self selection processes in multi stakeholderism mm -hmm. and how, I mean, if we keep such an intense debate. Uh, in an ongoing basis, it will finally sort of weaken the smallest players. And uh, in many organizations, I need, in my organization, for example, I really need to sort of talk to my members and see what they think in order to provide the input. So, like, really sometimes time is important. So, I don't know, so someone has posted that it would be great to have this as an ongoing process, but the ongoing process in multi-stakeholderism, like continuously online editing of documents addressing issues such as Net Mundial, etc., as um, uh, net mundial. Um, the surveillance. Then net, net neutrality, for example, mm. it, it might lead to the bigger voices, the more powerful actors in having such a, a space. I don't know. It's it's a, a reflection that I have and something that is really sort of worrying me because it is wearing down the smaller mm. organizations. Mm. It's provoking a lot of stress yeah. in the smaller constituencies, and and we need to. Uh, lay down a more solid platform from where to regain strength in order to continue with the process. So at its worst, it's an, the, the multi-stakeholder kind of treadmill is like a survival of the fittest, the survival of the biggest, the survival of the strongest. Um, and, w and where does that leave minorities? Where does that leave the, 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 the less uh, may, may financially? Her, yes, that. please. Yeah, um, I, I agree with you uh, entirely. And, and that has also form, formed part of our debate. Because even we talk of multi-stakeholderism and participation, uh, there are questions being asked about uh, who participates and what is the criteria of even selecting who participates in a certain stakeholder group. And, and, and within that, there, the, you know, I did speak about sense in, say, participating in a physical meeting. Uh, but uh, what we've also realized, it's not only in physical meetings, participation has cost elements. In, if you're going to conduct a, a, a grassroots 
a stakeholder consultation. It has a financial comp uh, uh, implication. If you're going to consult online, if you're from uh, parts of the world where access and affordability of the internet is an issue, cost becomes, uh, you know, finances become, you know, an issue. So, you know, the question is, even as we discuss multi-stakeholderism, isn't it time that we started discussing about a multi-stakeholder participation financing model mm. that can allow even the smallest uh, to participate? And within that, I am sure we will come out with a criteria of if it is civil society and we are saying who will represent us in this uh, multi-stakeholder group, then a clear criteria is going to come up out of that. So I think just like the internet, it continues to be evolutionary. I think these processes continue to be evolutionary and ideas are welcome and, you know, we continue building, yeah. building the process. But, but, but uh, absolutely, participation costs. Um, he who pays the piper calls the tune. There, is, there are concerns that many have about who is funding a lot of the participants that, you know, if they are part of a an internet organisation, they will be there as of right. Uh, but, you know, really, are we actually getting the internet user included in the conversation? Uh, I have a question here, and then I, I want to ask a, a, us all to tweet about some of the substantive um, elements of N Net Mundial. Where do you feel Net Mundial... Do you feel, sorry, that Net Mundial succeeded in... Um, formulating a response to online surveillance. Can you just can we have your 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 responses on that, sir? Thank you. Well, um, I wanted to start as a as a contribution to my colleague here from from Sweden on the being inundated by the information that is available, and we all participate in and perhaps some food for thought to, to Pedro and to the Brazilian uh, or organizers of the next IGF after Istanbul next year. Uh, something that is, uh, I'm a member of the multi-stakeholder advisory group on, on the IGF and of an idea that we're floating right now as a possibility perhaps is that um, to have something like a, the digital curators over there, perhaps a, a person taken out from the community to follow a certain thread, let's call that thread perhaps on net neutrality, and that uh, to be a moderator on that given issue and to collect the inputs during the whole year, not just for the IGF, but th throughout the whole year, and to collect th the good ideas and curate them, to model them in a given way, and then to give it again to the community for comments, and then to pr present it, not as a negotiated do document, uh, but rather as the moderator's uh, input into the, into the process. So that would be an objective way, but it, at the same time, it would be the chair that would stand behind, and the authority of that chair, if and, it is and not... Would that, be, that, would that be funded, or would that be volunteers? Well, uh, have volunteered, I think, but like there would have to be some way to 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 help to that participant to travel, of course. And yeah. I mean, this is just an idea, but I would love to hear some 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 thoughts mm -hmm. on this as well. And uh, if uh, both from uh, Brazil as the next organizer of the IGF and from from the wider community here, thanks. Mm -hmm. Any responses on that, um, Pedro? I think, uh, I think um, the the Net Mundial multi-stakeholder statement has actually regarding specifically to the IGF encouraged, uh, let's say, uh, not only it's strengthening in general, but I think it's uh, encouraged the international community to think about a broadened base of uh, funding, for, for example, and uh, to strengthen the outcome of the IGF as well. I think all these ideas really definitely contribute to that. And I think it's, it's very important that not only for the IGF, but also for the other uh, processes concern that were uh, of concern of the, uh, of the statement, that it's really a momentum that we have to really use this output from that Mundial and let them flow into the existing process. So Thank we you. really cannot lose this momentum. It's really important that uh, these kind of ideas and these kind of suggestions are really um, worked out and uh, that uh, we really bring the, these to the, the existing fora so that uh, we can discuss them. So, so it's about sustaining momentum. Yeah. Jo Joachim, is there anything that you want to come in on? 
Uh, well, there is some suggestions on, uh, on the idea that participation costs. The internet agrees that it is hard work to keep up with the discussions. Thanks, internet. But, <laughs> but they would suggest that you could actually use technology as well in possibly a smarter way. So liquid feedback is one system that has been mentioned to, to kind of try and um, collaboratively moderate the discussions and Can come to consensus. Does everybody know what liquid feedback means? Is it just me who doesn't really know. Google it. No. Okay, yeah. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> um, Dirk, I wanted to, to come to you as we move into the more substantive parts of Net Mundial. Could you just give a perspective on where you think it, it was good and where you think it fell short of expectations? Yeah. Um, I think on the main elements where, where the discussion focused, uh, the, the results were quite good. I know that, for example, on privacy, many in the civic society were looking for more, but to be realistic, in the end, we at least achieved to have the language, the essence and the language uh, of the UN resolution in there. So it's thereby what was just in one resolution now has been uh, kind of more firmly established, also established in a multi-stakeholder framework. So I thought that was, in, in, in the end, was a good outcome. And, and we are now waiting for the report of uh, Mrs. Pillai, who was uh, tasked by the resolution to work out a report, so see from there what, what could be done next. Uh, the other one, the roadmap, uh, you have to see that in context because the announcement of the US government had happened before the ICANN in Singapore. And I think that was an uh, important step by the US government. I can see that the timetable with Singapore coming made it uh, essential to already come out there. And I think this is, was a very welcome statement. But it's also part and parcel of the debate we were having before in, in Sao Paulo. So I think uh, that was another element which uh, should be taken into account and which now will be further elaborated in, uh, in London. Um, as I said, uh, there were some elements which were put on the list uh, of to-dos. Mm. The difficult list. That, uh, well, difficult list, but uh, also some of it was uh, clearly not... It wasn't possible to conclude on net neutrality in Sao Paulo. It was evident. And what about on surveillance? Well, I spoke about the privacy issue. So for me, the resolution uh, does tackle, and the language which comes from the resolution does tackle that issue. And is it strong enough, in your opinion? You, you know, I could always uh, like more, but you know, we were co-sponsors of that resolution, so we, we, we support language from that resolution, yes. Thank you. Does anybody from the audience want to come in on the substance or where, uh, perhaps net on, on diff different issues, the things that people have mentioned, privacy, surveillance, net neutrality, uh, w w did Net Mundial live up to things? And what is going to happen with the... Uh, Dirk Brengelman just mentioned that prior to the Net Mundial meeting about a month beforehand, the US government made uh, an announcement that it intended to, to sort of pave the way to step back from its role. Uh, I wonder if there's anybody in the audience, uh, perhaps from the US government, who might be able to elaborate on the motivation <laughs> behind that statement. Um, uh, perhaps we could get a, a, a microphone over there. I to could the, to the identify table. one or two. <laughs> there's a, there's an, a, a table of uncomfortable looking people there. Uh, perhaps we can just get a microphone to, to one of them to, to explain how these two things fit together and whether you see the net mundial as, as, uh, uh, as paving the way, as, as really m making a, a step in the right direction. So, so two things, our uh, NTIA and our Commerce Department, uh, I'm Chris Painter, who will be speaking later in the uh, panel, um, it uh, made the decision, and this was really a long-term decision, this wasn't done overnight, this was something that was part of a longer-term process that really was meant to uh, really reaffirm the multi-stakeholder approach to internet governance by saying, uh, let the multi-stakeholder community determine how we transition this IANA function. And that's indeed what's happening now. And that's what will happen uh, as part of the discussion in London, uh, part of the discussion in Singapore, 
Uh, and, and that really has to be and has been a multi-stakeholder discussion. And we've set out certain conditions in that, um, that transition notice, including, I think, one of the key ones, uh, that it has to be a multi-stakeholder approach. And so in other words, not a UN well, solution. Well, and we specifically say, or my, my colleagues uh, in Commerce spe specifically said, that we will not accept an intergovernmental solution for this. It really has to be a multi-stakeholder solution. So, so. In, in one way, the statement was like a spoiler pri prior to Net Mundial. Oh, I, I totally disagree. I think, I think that this was a, you know, a, a long-term effort that, if anything, I think it was a springboard to Net Mundial. And I think Net Mundial really was able to take that mm. and energize that discussion. And really, it signaled, I think, to everyone that the U.S. really is serious about this multi-stakeholder approach, and I think that helped uh, NetMundial be the success it was. And I do think, you know, never, not everyone gets everything they want in any conference in mm -hmm. any time in the world, but I think we were able to come together and reach a really mm -hmm. good rough consensus in that meeting uh, that demonstrated in a way I hadn't seen before this, uh, the validity and the, uh, the strength of this multi-stakeholder approach. So, uh, so I think it strengthened it. I don't think it weakened it. I don't think it was a spoiler at all. No, thank you. Any other comments or questions from the audience? Well, some m remarks that have been made, partly by the panel and others, is, is this sense of sustaining momentum. I mean, it really does feel like the Net Mundial kind of was a moment where people kind of rose to the challenge and, and came together to, to, to do something quite exciting. So what next? Is this something like, you know, uh, an exciting World Cup group match, or are we going mm -hmm. to go through to the finals? You know, uh, what happened next? The three of you, I think, were involved in the U UN Sci um, Commission for Science and Technology for Development Working Group on Enhanced Cooperation. Try saying that in a hurry. Um, so that took place very soon afterwards. How did how did that that group respond to the Net Mundial outcomes, Pedro? Well, yeah, I think, well, it was, uh, there was a meeting right after, what, the week after uh, Net Mundial, a meeting uh, of this working group of enhanced cooperation. And then two weeks after, there was the 17th session of uh, the Commission for Science Technology for Development. And there, uh, well, we could see, unfortunately, that, well, Sorry, just to, can yeah. we just give a bit of background? What is that doing? What it well, the, the, um, What's its job? the working group of enhanced cooperation was created in order to discuss the concept of enhanced cooperation, which is uh, mentioned in the uh, Tunis agenda, specifically in paragraphs 69 to 71. <laughs> and um, it uh, concerns the public policy issues uh, related to the internet. And there was a working group uh, built in order to discuss that. Unfortunately, the working group didn't come to, let's say, uh, conclusions about the concept, uh, as there were uh, many diverging uh, opinions, uh, perspectives on this concept. And, um, and then uh, the 17th session, which, let's say, created this group, actually decided to not to renew its mandate, but uh, one of the activities of this group, which was to map existing po uh, public policy issues to existing processes, this activity will continue, it will be uh, done by the secretariat of the CSTD. So, so this is an ongoing process. Uh, it is, uh, as an outcome of the Net Mundial Multi-Stakeholder Statement, there is a specific uh, statement in there There's saying that, that it's, it's a work that should continue, that, that it's a priority work, and we hope that the Secretariat will be doing, uh, uh, with the assistance of uh, the UN, uh, the specific and technical bodies of the UN, to come up with a metrics that will have this mapping and that in the next uh, intersessional of the CSTD we will be able to evaluate that work. So was the CSTD energized by the Net Mundial? Was it, was it uh, very happy to take on board, you know, to take the bat on and continue the, the running? Grace? I wouldn't say so, uh, <laughs> but just let me say that uh, the working group had been going on um, this was the, the fourth meeting came after Net Mundial, 
So we had had other three meetings before yes. that have taken place within, um, within a, a span of one year. Um, and there has been an attempt in that working group to actually have a multi-stakeholder group. So there were 22 governments, I think, represented, and um, another 20 or so people drawn from different uh, stakeholder groups, civil society, academia, technical community, and the business community, so about 25 mm. each from, from, each, uh, from each group. Um, you know, it, the discussions would go on well, and at some point we seemed like we were going to get to a consensus because the agreement was that decisions would be made through a consensus. So if one person disagreed, then there would be no, um, there would mm. be no consensus. And so um, there were issues about the role of government in public policy. And a few governments were insisting that public policy, uh, international public policy on internet issues was actually a government role and they did not believe in multi-stakeholderism. And therefore, um, in the final run, we, 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 we really had no agreement. Um, so on, does on, this on mean that Net Mundial was just like a, a dream? No, Net Mundial no. was a different process. And, and let me say, Net Mundial is also an important process. CSTD is an important process. We also have um, WISIS Plus 10 review that's coming up. We have the plenty Plenty port Plenty. that's also coming up. So all these processes, we have ICANN and um, IANA being transited mm -hmm. into ICANN. So there are all these processes that are happening. And I think the next two years are going to be very critical for internet governance. Um, and therefore, all these processes are looking into multi-stakeholderism. And I think, um, like I said, it's, it's evolutionary. We continue to discuss sometimes. We have yeah. uh, no hard and fast answers. Uh, and I think that's why even such a meeting is taking place. Thank you. Yeah. There's a lady at the back there. Can we get a microphone up to the back? And a lady at the front. So let's, uh, if, you, if, if you get the, can you just keep your hand up so that, please go ahead when you get the microphone. Thank you, uh, Carolina. Uh, so I think Grace actually opened uh, nicely for my question. So my question for the panel is, what are the suggestions in terms of strategies and tactics moving forward regarding the OECS Plus 10? We see that there is a break of opinions between the G77 and uh, US and other countries. Uh, and also we have the ITU coming where actually binding decisions are taken. So what do you suggest has our uh, next core steps and some core activities we should be developing until then. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. I'm going to take, take your question next. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Nenna, and I said at Net Mundial that I come from the internet. I still do. Um, one, one thing I just want to point us to is the very last part of the governance principles on the outcome document of Net Mundial itself. It says that Net Mundial recognized that the internet is a global resource which should be managed in the public interest. And I think for me that was the most important um, in the document. That was the very first time in our 15 years of negotiating around WCs and internet governance and all of those um, committees that um, there was consensus that the internet should be managed in public interest. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm hopeful that we should build on this as the Internet Governance Forum is seeking a way to make itself more relevant and as all the panels and committees are working, as Grace said, on moving us forward. Mm -hmm. But I think that Net Mundial has had this block laid that we all should be working towards the management of the internet in public interest. And as ICANN um, renews itself and moves forward, we shouldn't lose this. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So can we have your reactions to those two questions? What should be the strategy moving forward to the WISIS Plus 10, which is the 10th anniversary of the World Summit on the Information Society? And also your responses on, on this um, enunciation of the 
internet as a global resource, a, go a global resource managed in the public interest. And also, uh, thank you for bringing it up. We've had some, uh, some hints at the past. What do you think the Internet Governance Forum can learn from the Net Mondial experience? Can it, can it be applied? So I'm going to start with you, Joanna, and then I'm going to go to Dirk. Yeah, I, I think in the way forward now we have this challenge of, being, uh, of having this document with the good parts of the document, as, such as the one that Nana mentioned, recognized in other processes. Uh, in the working group on enhanced cooperation, uh, the, it was no goal to have a single mention about Net Mundial document, mm -hmm. so it, it was sad. Yeah. And, but we have, talking about inclusiveness and trying to map and doing things visual, we did like this map of all the other events that are going on and and we'll be with the same going. people in them. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, so Net Mundial document should be considered in every each of these mm. documents and there will be a challenge. We need to to think about a strategy of doing yeah. so. I think it points the text of the document of Net Mundial points to the IGF specifically. So uh, it, it's it's up for the people in the MAG and also for the people in Brazil that's going to think about the next IGF to rethink. I th personally, I think we should rethink the format and and having something ha taking into account the. The, the report on improvement of the IGF mm. and taking those actions to move forward because otherwise it, it, it IGF gets weaker and weaker. No? Can it be achieved, do you think? I mean, do you think it... I, I've heard you in other fora describe this uh, it, it as too little too late for the Internet Governance Forum. Do you think that the Internet Governance Forum is beyond help? No, I think it has to be rethought. Re and reformed and modernized and getting more innovative and using all those tools for doing that. And perhaps Net Mundial can be an inspiration for that. Hey? I hope so. Okay. And can I, I just, just point to very quick, yeah, yeah, and then I'm going to go to Dirk. Just to mention that I, I disagree that surveillance was uh, tackled properly in the text, and I think that the, the context of Net Mundial in which we are under surve mass surveillance practices is still uh, around us, so we didn't solve it, so we still need have this incentive to, to change things. Uh, it has been one year of the Snowden revelation, exactly on the 5th of July, and and the guy is still there, is stuck in Russia, his asylum is going to, I don't know if it's going to remain or not, so the context is still here, and we still need to work much more further for really improving the situation. Thank you. Dirk? Um, I personally believe that the IGF has a role to play, and yes, it can take inspiration from the Net Mundial experience, I would think so. Uh, we, we were discussing the last uh, events in Geneva, and I would like to put it a little bit in perspective. Yes, we were also disappointed that there was no clear-cut reference, yeah. But in uh, Sao Paulo, we were working with rough consensus, and in that uh, event, we were working on the basis of uh, classical consensus, so to say. And there were one or two states, in particular one state, we will not name them, who had that hiccup, which I think you described well. Sao Paulo was on multi-stakeholder, uh, and, and these are governments who think that the government should have a special role, mm -hmm. and the multi-stakeholder model shouldn't take away from that. So you can imagine why some of them didn't, or one or two of them didn't want to subscribe uh, completely to the Net Mundial. Um, but I wouldn't over overemphasize it either. Um, the IGF, I think, can take uh, uh, some clues from, uh, from uh, Net Mundial. And then I think we also need to, to work again on the uh, visits, uh, and there are debates in New York, uh, for example, in, in the second committee. I think we need to turn our attention to that one now, because there has been a bit 
I won't go into details, but there has been a bit of a stalemate, if I can put it that way. Mm. <laughs> so I think we needs need to... It needs renewed energy, uh, or less energy. Mm. Mm. Okay, I'm going that's to go difficult to, to answer, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but it needs renewed Something. focus, that, that's uh, for yeah. sure. So I think we can also move forward there in, 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 in the future. So I think the pieces will come together. Thank I'm optimistic. Uh, digital curators, is anything happening on the internet? No real questions at the moment. They just seem to echo some of the smartness from the panel. Okay, thank you. Grace, you'd like to respond? I would like to respond to Carolina. Uh, and, and this really uh, is my personal opinion. Uh, in terms of moving uh, forward, I look at um, all the different processes that are taking place um, and all towards um, looking into internet governance. And I think some of the processes, you know, uh, we need to start evaluating how effective they have been. Then identify if there have been gaps and look at how we can strengthen some of those processes. For example, the IGF has been criticized because it doesn't make decisions. But the IGF is beautiful because it allows mm. people to come and discuss in a very honest manner issues that are of concern as far as the internet is concerned. Mm -hmm. So if we want the IGF to make a decision, we might change it and we might change the entire structure of how we do things mm -hmm. at the IGF. Mm -hmm. So my, my, my personal um, opinion is that we, we need, yes, to have some evaluation and then out of that evaluation and based on the internet, how the internet has continued to grow, then come up with decisions on how we move forward. Secondly, and uh, out of what I learned at the CSTD, uh, there were some governments that were very rigid um, on, on, on wanting to have the process being multi-stakeholder. And I think what other stakeholders need to do is really to identify within the governments that are participating, just identify a few that are champions, then lobby them so that they can influence and maybe talk to their counterparts the language that you talk when you meet as governments mm -hmm. so that then they start listening. Because let us face it, uh, some of the governments that were resisting um, at CSTD were basing their, 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 their resistance on the Tunis agenda, which was done in 2005. But let's face it, since 2005, up to now, it's about 13 years, so much has happened on the internet. In fact, in 2005, who knew that we would all be coming to these meetings with three gadgets that need to be connected to the internet? Who knew that you know, we would, even our children would actually uh, be having gadgets and, and would know that they can connect to the internet? So that is the evolutionary nature of the internet, and we must take that into consideration. Thank you. Are there any more questions from the audience? Is there th one, one um, process that we we haven't um, discussed is the announcement of the Global Commission on Internet uh, Governance. Pinda Wong, you're, you're one of the commissioners, aren't you? Uh, um, maybe we can give you an, uh, a, a microphone and perhaps you could just tell us what's happening with that process and how you see it fitting in with the Net Mundial. And, uh, you, I'm, I'm going to let you off the hook in that you don't have to speak on behalf of the Commission. Yeah, I just thought it would be interesting to have some update because it was announced back in January and uh, maybe just some context for everyone. Sure. I, I'm Pinder Wong in this case speaking personally, although I do serve uh, as a Commissioner on the Global Commission on Internet Governance, which was announced on January 23rd and Davos. Uh, that's obviously several months ago. Uh, we met for the first time, uh, the, the chairman is Carl Bilt, who will be speaking at lunch today. Um, we met for the first time physically in Meet Space uh, yesterday, uh, and we operate under Chatham House rules. Uh, we'll be producing a uh, some summary shortly, but it's been really great to meet the other commissioners. Um, and I think we're just getting, getting started yeah. to, to get our heads around the results from this wonderful meeting at Netmandial. Obviously, we're looking, at, I think, at from a slightly different perspective, given the composition of the group. Uh, and uh, we'll be meeting, taking operationally, we'll be having uh, several meetings, two more at the end of this year. Uh, one on, I think, uh, October 14th in Seoul. There's another meeting there. And, um, you know, we look to, uh, forward to engaging with you. 
so you know, just grab me. Um, again, it's very early days. Uh, the work will um, span about 18 months. So although we're just getting started, we have an excellent, uh, excellent research advisory network on which you serve. So <laughs> touche. Um, and, I think, <laughs> and I think you'll be meeting shortly. So we're just getting going. Um, we'd love to hear your comments and views uh, on uh, internet governance writ large. Um, and several of us are here. Uh, please identify yourselves if you're in the room. So I'm one of them uh, alone. Another one at the back. Uh, and See, Professor, at the back, Professor Joe side. Nye, uh, obviously, who produced some excellent work. So um, early days, grab us. Pleased to be here, and thanks for the question. And while I've got you on the microphone, can you just reflect on whether the Net Mundial was, it, you know, was that an inspiration to you all as you met yesterday? Did it affect you? Was it very present in your thoughts, or is it something that you view as transitory? I'm not asking for a, a personal a, a view. It's, personal it's, view it's, I think we're looking at the big picture, and obviously the big picture. There's a spectrum of events. Um, one of the difficulties, though, frankly speaking. Um, as a not quite outsider, mm. is trying to articulate the infinity of meetings uh, that occur and how actually to, to, to take it down to brass tacks at a concrete level. In other words, looking at, you, you do all these talks, the, the, probably the, the group of people who go from different meeting to different meeting. I think the next one is the ICANN meeting in London, um, et cetera, et cetera. So it's very difficult to articulate um, in a coherent way, um, not that it can be co articulated coherently, but the, the, the relationship between the meetings. The interesting thing, I think, is to go at the level above, which is the issue of principles, which is a very good uh, output from the Net Mondial, and also looking at the roadmap. So in that, in that sense, it's very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. In the last three minutes, are there any very, very final comments from the audience? I can see that... Dirk, you wanted to say something, and Pedro, I think we probably, anyone? <coughs> okay, you have the floor, both of you. A minute and a half each. Just uh, some comments concerning a colleague here. I think um, NetMundial was uh, conceived as a one-time event. An event, a special moment in which we would partially step out of the current mm. flow of mm. processes and fora in order to think internet governance in a more holistic way and uh, trying to give it some guidance. And I think we have achieved that. We have come out with a document that uh, can and uh, def definitely will be of use of those existing processes. Many people ask me, will there be another Net Mundial? Like a Hollywood franchise. <laughs> <laughs> the sequel. I mean, uh, I think that's not the appropriate time to, to think about it and discuss. I think we need to really measure the success mm -hmm. of NetMundial, see how the document flows into these uh, other processes, and then maybe in the future think about it. Thank you very much. Dirk Brengelman. I, I would support that we are still in the process of needing mm. some moment of reflection and digestion, so at least until the IGF. Uh, for the IGF, I, I would like to reflect on something which I've just heard, and that is, yes, it should take inspiration from uh, the Net Mundial, but then we shouldn't go into that uh, rhythm of the, the IGF is just there for blah, blah, so to say, because I've been at the uh, IGF in Bali, and I can tell you that, yeah, it doesn't take formal decisions, but in terms of the Net Mundial process, the meeting in Bali was very, very important because that's where all the stakeholders came together, had first discussions, first ideas were coming out of it. And I believe that uh, when we met with the delegations from ICANN and Brazil, etc., that uh, most of us already had a very good idea of what would be coming our yeah. way mm -hmm. after that. So not always when you take decisions or not take decisions, you haven't done anything. Think, but I still, it could, it could be a little bit more proactive and more operational. Mm -hmm. And then I would support what the gentleman from Hong Kong said, which is I think many of us uh, have that moment right now that, uh, yes, where is the, the concrete beef, as you, as you would perhaps say, my colleagues back home in my office can't hear me say anymore, uh, can't you guys nail the pudding to the wall? And uh, that is exactly how I sometimes feel about. Yeah, thank you very much. Right, well, we're out of time. Uh, thank you very much 
to you in the audience for your questions, which have very much kept our panel on their toes, and to our wonderful digital curators. Great to see you again. Um, and I'm sure that you'd all like to join me in thanking our excellent panel for their thoughts and, and insights today. Thank you. Thank you.